In today's video, I'm going through this week's crypto, on-chain, and DeFi news. We'll talk about the on-chain metrics driving crypto this week, some top news stories, DeFi opportunities, and then upcoming token unlocks. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick. And as a reminder, nothing in this video is financial advice. This is solely intended to be used for educational purposes. Now let's get into it. To start, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin price. As of the time I'm making this video, Bitcoin is sitting at just over $60,000. This is after a pretty dramatic crash a week and a half ago alongside traditional finance markets. And since then, it's recovered nicely. However, it's potentially coming up against some resistance here. Uh, but in this channel, we focus largely on on-chain metrics and fundamentals. So let's take a look at where those sit right now. Currently, Fear and Greed Index is saying that the market is still extremely fearful. This is getting better from extreme fear, but indicates that it may still be a good time to buy. And in terms of DeFi, total value locked is recovering, however, is recovering fairly slowly. So it crashed from around 150 some billion dollars at the end of July down to 115 billion dollars during that crash last week. And then since then, it's only recovered to around 126 billion. And this includes liquid staking. So uh, for health of DeFi market, really, I'd like to see more liquidity continue to actually re-enter the DeFi space. On the plus side, if you look at stable coins, and stable coins are one of the top trends I like to track for liquidity in the overall crypto market, we can see that, well, maybe you can't see in this uh, graph because it looks flat, but it's actually growing. It, it hit its highest point since mid 2022 this week at over 165 billion dollars and if we remove algorithmic stable coins because that crash back in 2022 was largely from algorithmic stables then we can see that we're at 164.25 billion dollars in stable coins today and the peak was just over 167 billion stable coins in spring of 2022 so we are actually coming up to that peak pretty quickly and i think there's a pretty good chance we surpass that and this is a good sign because what this means is that net money liquidity is entering the crypto market right if you look during the previous bear market you saw that it was slowly bleeding out over multiple years and then it really started to flatten out and start to grow again before the market took off because again that indicates that money is re-entering the market some other good signs are if we look over here at etfs then we see that despite the continued outflows from Grayscale, for the most part, ETF inflows are still positive. There's been down days here and there, especially when the market was crashing. However, overall, ETF inflows have been largely positive the past week. And if we look over here at the ETH ETF, then we can see that despite several down days, you might think that it's down. Actually, if we zoom in here, then net over the past week, those flows have been positive because we had several days that were so positive the week before. Uh, and in time, as these grayscale outflows start to level out and subside, I'm expecting that we see more positive inflows to the ETH ETF, and that's going to put some solid buying pressure on ETH. Before we get into the specific trends driving the market this week, I want to note that this new segment is sponsored by Scale. Scale is one of the top blockchain networks for gaming right now, and they are starting to delve into DeFi as well. Scale just announced this Swell program where they have a series of social and on-chain quests, so I'll link that down in the description for you to check out. All right, now let's talk about some of the trends driving the market today. First one is real-world assets, and this one jumped out to me because if you look at the total value of tokenized real world assets recently then you can see that since the middle of 2021 three years ago the total value of real world assets that are tokenized on chain has grown from between five and six hundred million dollars to as of today nearly 12 billion dollars and you can do the math that is many many multiples up and it comes from a combination of private credit u.s treasuries commodities corporate bonds and and other things and i think this is really significant because although it's easy to get lost in the day-to-day -day fluctuations of crypto if you looked at any other industry and said okay this thing is growing 20x 24x in 
three years, you would say that is a very fast growing industry. And that is just an insane adoption curve, right? I mean, you can't really extrapolate that sort of percent gain into the future. But just imagine, right, if this continued at even half of that growth for another few years, you'd be talking about hundreds of billions of dollars that were tokenized on chain. And the total addressable market of tokenized assets on chain is, of course, in the trillions of dollars, if not tens of trillions of dollars. So I think that this is an underrated trend. And I think we're going to start to see this reflected in certain chains and projects for tokenizing assets. Eventually, you have, of course, blockchains that things are tokenized on Ethereum being a major one. BlackRock built their Biddle fund on there. You have some RWA action on Solana and you have other chains like Avalanche that may be building more specifically towards an RWA centric future. Another trend that's really been on my radar recently is prediction markets. With the U.S. elections coming up, adoption of crypto-based prediction markets has just been going through the roof. If you look at total value locked on all prediction markets, it's up from around $15, $16 million in early 2023 to over $100 million today. And that is driven primarily by poly market. And if you think about it, crypto really is a good fit for prediction markets because historically, this is an industry that has struggled greatly to find payment rails and crypto makes it easy for anyone in the world to access them. And in fact, I'm so interested in prediction markets that I launched a new newsletter, Prediction Pulse, that covers the latest trends, markets, and other analysis in prediction markets. Uh, I'll link that down in the description for those of you that are interested. Another interesting trend related to a specific protocol is that Aerodrome, the leading decentralized exchange on Coinbase's base network, has seen really strong volume growth over the past few months. If we look at the total volume, we can see that even that smaller peak in March now looks just like a little blip compared to the growth that Aerodrome has had in recent months. We look at the weekly volume, we can see that last week was the best week ever on Aerodrome by far. And I think this is a sign, first off, that more and more people are starting to use Coinbase's base chain. Second off, it's a good sign for Aerodrome purely as a major DEX and as a as a DEX on base. Another interesting piece of on-chain metrics that I noticed is that a lot of Solana protocols have been in the top of the fee rankings. If we look over the past seven days, then we can see that Jito, Solana, Radium, and Pump.Fun are all in the top 10. So that is four Solana-related protocols and if you just joined crypto this year, this might not seem that exceptional, but if you go back a year, go back two years, basically this entire top 10 would be Ethereum with the occasional Binance Smart Chain or Tron in there. So having nearly half of them be Solana is pretty exceptional. And uh, specifically, I think Jito's rise is worth noting. Jito is the leading liquid staking and also the largest DeFi protocol by deposits period on Solana. And uh, Jito has just seen incredible fee growth at, at an all-time high. And uh, part of that is because they have MEV boosted staking rewards. So they're collecting fees both from, from liquid staking and from MEV. In other crypto news stories this week, Celsius is suing Tether for the amount of $2 billion in Bitcoin. Celsius Network is taking legal action against Tether, alleging that they have billions of dollars in Bitcoin that were lost in fraudulent transfers. Now, I won't comment on the specifics of this case and who is in the right and who is in the wrong. However, if you had money that was lost in Celsius, maybe this could be a good sign for you if they're able to recover some of that from Tether. In other news, Canto Chain, a layer one focused on DeFi, experienced a halt on August 11th due to a consensus issue. Now, these things do sometimes happen with new blockchains. One thing I like to know is that a blockchain that's, for example, one or two years old is in terms of lifespan, where some of the chains that we use a lot, like Ethereum and Bitcoin, were, were uh, nearly a decade ago, or in Bitcoin's case, more than a decade ago. That being said, not great when a chain that you are relying on to be uncensorable halts. Another interesting on-chain stat and news piece is that Ethereum gas fees are extremely low. In fact, they are historically low. If we look over the past six or five years, we can see that they're actually at their lowest point right now since 
2020. So they are they are uh, very low. If you have, for example, things deposited in DeFi on Ethereum that you've been waiting to withdraw or that you've been waiting to make transfers or maybe waiting to deposit something on an Ethereum application, now might be a good time since gas fees are extremely low. And I think a big part of this, people will make a lot of out of this. I think a big part of it is that that uh, a lot of uh, Ethereum activity has moved to layer twos. So it's still in the Ethereum ecosystem. However, it's on layer twos. And so as a result of this, uh, the gas fees on the mainnet are cheaper. In an interesting piece of adoption news, two large US carriers are testing out Helium's mobile network. Helium, if you're not familiar, is a D-PIN network, decentralized physical infrastructure network that uses crypto as an incentivization. And uh, it's really been gaining a lot of traction. I think this is cool because it's a crypto-based network that is actually being used for a real non-speculative business use case. In DeFi news, if you are restaking your ETH through Eigenlayer, you are now going to start receiving EigenDA base rewards. Eigenlayer is launching their AVS rewards, and EigenDA is going to be the first AVS to reward stakers. And that goes live today, August 13th. Stakers will be receiving a relatively small amount of ETH. Another interesting DeFi opportunity I came across is wrapped BTC in USDT concentrated liquidity on BFI. I know that was a mouthful. This is concentrated liquidity on Uniswap, so the largest decentralized exchange on Arbitrum, the Ethereum layer two. And currently this is yielding nearly 200% APY. And if we look at the APY over time, we can see that it has fluctuated. However, it has consistently been high for at least several weeks to a month now, often being in the hundreds of percents. So if you're holding Bitcoin or wrapped Bitcoin and you want to earn some yield while pairing it with USDT. I think this is an interesting opportunity right now. Final piece of DeFi news is DeBridge, a chain we've been talking about a lot on this channel. They announced their airdrop and the checker for DBR token. Check that out if you have been using DeBridge because you may be eligible for an airdrop. Finally, let's take a look at token unlocks. These are tokens that have major unlocks upcoming in the near future. Anytime you see a token being shelled a lot, Always be sure to check whether it has an upcoming unlock because oftentimes investors or other people with stakes in the ecosystem, they'll try to draw up support to, to generate buyers in advance of an unlock. This website is token.unlocks.app, one of my favorites for checking this. And we can see here that some cliff unlocks to note in the next seven days are AVAX with 2.4%, SAND with 9%, and ARB with 2.8% coming up in the near future. Some other ones that are good to know are StarkNet with nearly 4%, Ape Token with 2.3%, Rose with 2%, Pixel with 7%, ID with 4%, and a few others uh, as we come up into the next two weeks. By the way, if you want to see these token unlocks for yourself, this website is free. However, they do have a pro version and you can get 5% off by using my discount code DDNM5. And by the way, if you want to get all of this news in your inbox every week, I have a newsletter, dynamodefi.substack.com that includes recommended readings, on-chain analysis, a farm of the week. That's where I got this wrapped Bitcoin USDT farm from as well as other things to help you in your crypto research like macro events and unlocks. That's dynamodefi.substack.com. And for more videos like this one, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.